I had a guy came in and he said, I have to do my drug test. And I said, okay, is that like before the workout? He goes, no, the guy's going to be here. And I go, what? And he said, the guy's going to be here. I wanted to do it here. And you thought they were testing you, obviously. Yeah. You're so jacked. All natty, yeah. bro. That's right. And, uh, and so the guy came in and that's not a, to me, that's not an enviable job. Yeah, right. And he went in and followed my guy into the bathroom. And I didn't know this. He can't stand behind him. So he has they to stand be right there. like this and see what you <laughs> saw in the mirror from the side. The pecker checker, yeah. just like your mirror. Maybe that's why and, your mirror is set up that way. Yeah, that's why. That's exactly <laughs> that. And that's when I redid the bathrooms. And he has to stand there and watch that. And I just thought, why am I in here seeing him see that? And it was one of those things where I just thought, wow, pro sports is not what people think it yeah. is. You know, it was... Okay, well, that was uh, that was one of our guests this week, uh, Gunnar Peterson. We actually were in L.A. last week, uh, not last week, last month. No, it was months ago. It was uh, it was April, as a matter of fact. Mm. Time has flown. Uh, we were in his house. In, what a shithole, huh? In, <laughs> what a dump that guy lives in. A palatial Beverly, Beverly Hills, uh, a just a mansion, just a, a giant. Mansion. I don't know how that guy looks himself in the mirror every I, day. I don't know either. Living in that place. How many square feet was that spot? Either? I don't have a clue. Yeah, it's bigger than my new gym. I know that. It's 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 very very large. Very yeah. nice. Place. Beautiful. Yeah, it was yeah. absolutely amazing. Basketball court in the backyard. Uh, they have a, another house that has a, like a gym in it, and yeah. they have a pool, and it just it was just the list of things going on. It has a big big ass movie room, like a real movie yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, it was a real screening room. And he's like, I'm never even in. <laughs> And he was very down to earth about it. It was very cool. Yeah, he was awesome. But he was great. Since we have seen him, something pretty cool has happened to him. He is now the director of what strength and conditioning, athletic yeah. performance, whatever for the Lakers. Yeah, I'm really interesting. Really interested to see how that'll pan out because uh, what I know of other strength coaches in the NBA, they are much younger and they're more responsible for a lot of things that I can't picture Gunnar Peterson being responsible for so uh it's just you know any any and everything to make the team better sometimes yeah. NFL is quite different what coach house does is quite different our uh, our homie Joe Ken but um <clears throat> in the NBA seems like they're still kind of quote unquote getting their shit together yeah and uh they'll have those uh the strength coaches hustling around doing all kinds of stuff washing towels and all kinds of crazy things so i cannot envision that for uh gunner and i'm sure that he has uh, some other arrangements but uh i'm interested to see how it how it works out i think the lakers are uh, looking to get some new facilities uh, the facility they had before we knew the previous strength coach there um and uh the facilities were just terrible oh really <laughs> yeah really really small gym area and uh just not, not enough room for even all the players to work out which as you know in basketball there's not even that many players to have on the roster no so. no <laughs> you should have enough space for everybody you should well i i wonder if if director if the title is kind of a part yeah of the maybe it's more a little bit uh hands off maybe maybe it's yeah more it's like he's sort of sort of structuring the training and setting yeah. the tone and hiring people because right. i think there was like a regime change right I yeah mean, that, i hope so that was the thing all right i hope so yeah they need they need something <laughs> down there Anyway, enjoy this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please. What was that other guy's name that was there, too? Ben, oh, Ben Bruno. Yeah. That guy. That's who it was. Ben Bruno with the skinny calves. The skinny His calves. His calves are opposite of Jim McDee's calves. <laughs> you know, and um, just I, obviously there's been some time since we recorded this episode. So I, it, just watching it back, like it was it was really good. Yeah. Like I think it was I was tired at the end of a long day. Right. And so I don't think I was absorbing everything that was going on. But right. um, Ben had some really good counterpoint stuff to say to what Yeah, to what yeah Ben's said. very like nonchalant, and he has built a business and, and made a lot of dough um, just off of being a nice guy that's straightforward. That people pretty much. just want to keep working with. That's kind of the message. That yeah, I and he, that uh, what he said about Justin Timberlake, I think, was great. The first day Justin Timberlake came to work out with him, he was wearing <laughs> some funky shoes, and he's like, you're not wearing those while we're training. And I think that, uh, that those type of celebrities and those type of people that are really well off, that have people treat them really well all the time, they probably appreciate that. And he's yeah. like, oh, shit, well, I didn't know they're not appropriate for lifting. I have no idea. Somebody taking a hard line. 
Yeah. With them about about a kick a kick in the butt. Yeah, doing something the appropriate way. Right. Exactly. Right. So anyway, if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, like and share this video. We'll be back at the very end to wrap it up. And if you're listening on iTunes, uh, go over to iTunes and hit, give it hit us up with a five star. We really appreciate mm. those. They and and share the episode with people that you think would enjoy it. That. Is a big deal. Also, don't forget, if you go to howmuchyoubench.net and type in the word PowerCast, you get 15% off of slingshots. So go over there and check that out, howmuchyoubench.net, 15% off all slingshots. Support for this episode of the PowerCast comes from Ape Man Apparel for people who lift heavy weights at apemanstrong.com. Complex Muscle Stem Products at complexusa.com. Use the code PowerCast and get an additional 28% discount. How much you bench.net, home of Mark Bell's slingshot. Bench heavy with no pain with Mark Bell's slingshot. And bodybuilding.com, the world's largest fitness website and supplement store. Bodybuilding.com has free plans for every level. Visit bodybuilding.com today to become your best self. Recorded live in Los Angeles, California, this is Mark Bell's PowerCast. Standing just to the left of Jim McDee, here's your host, Mark Bell. Yes, we are uh, rolling, so just... Uh, oh, good to know. These, uh, Alex symbols. Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on how you look at it. You can close your eyes or right. you can keep them open. It's, depend on, it's up to you. Not to mention that they're black. <laughs> I, I didn't mention that. No, I didn't mention that. Yeah, so I'm not going to mention that. You're not going to mention that they're black. Not going to mention that. Tell me, there's when no we're rolling. Where we are, uh, we are oh, totally ready. I think okay. we're. I think we're done. That yeah, about that wraps it, it up. Yeah, that's wrap it, it up. <laughs> you walk into this big, beautiful home, right? And I really like the fact that when we walked in, you said it's lived in, which kind of gives the idea well, of like Ben and I have been here. How long have we been together? <laughs> How long have you been together? Hey, now, but it feels brand new. It feels. It still it still has the same spark as from the beginning. Yes. I like that. <laughs> but you tell us it's lived in and, and we're able to walk in with our shoes on and stuff and not have to kick them off and not have to worry about. Sometimes you walk into a nice house like this, a mansion, let's call it what it is, and you feel like you can't fart in there or cough or sneeze. But you can I fart in there. I don't feel that way. <laughs> you don't feel that way <laughs> No, at all. no, no. That fact, I can't remember ever feeling that way anywhere. But one thing I noticed, you know, the house is really impressive and for me, it's inspiring. You know, that's kind of why I wanted to come here. It's why I wanted to go to your gym. Your gym is, without a doubt, the coolest fucking gym I've ever seen that's in my fun. life. Thank you. I, I love it. It's it's really, but it gets me fired up. But one thing that didn't get me fired up, one thing I do have a problem with. You're going to hurt my feelings. I'm going to walk uh, out. <laughs> here it comes. I feel uh, it coming. This is the lead in. Go ahead. Yeah, are you well, gonna, my feeling, are you farting I, right now? <laughs> <laughs> feel free. I mean, relax. The, the problem is you're talking about yourself. and And the problem happened to me. My feelings were hurt very badly today. I went into your bathroom and there's mirrors in there and there's mirrors in places that there shouldn't be. <laughs> you have what I like to call a pecker checker. And you know, as guys, we like to brag, Hey, I'm hung like a horse, you know, yeah. like, Oh, I really, I really smashed on that, you know, and you have reality staring you right in the face, basically. But, but that's your reality. <laughs> and it's such a sad one. Oh my God. And my, I would like you just to publicly apologize, but if you if you don't want to, if you don't feel like you have to, I get it. See, I like that. <laughs> I don't feel that. I'm not feeling that. that mirror was the you look straight ahead and there's a mirror right on your wiener. And yeah. It's just not it should be like a distorted mirror or something. You should like get a funhouse mirror. Yeah. Yeah. My dad had a saying about those mirrors that included the word shortcomings, I, as I remember. So yeah. two, was that two words or one? Coming uh, up short. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And I don't was, know your father. Like that. Yeah. We, we came up short. I came up short today. Yeah. I, I think we all did. Way. Anyway, it was awesome going to your gym. We're here well, today you, with. Well, look at it this way. At least you're all natty. <laughs> yeah. I, I was at one point. <laughs> and uh, I'm natty today other than the alcohol that you're making me drink. It's pouring it down your gullet. I, you know what was the weirdest part of this whole interaction so far is that Ben wouldn't do the podcast unless I removed my pants. <laughs> That's why we're behind the table. Yeah. I have my conditions. Bruno Strong. Yep. So we're here today with Ben Bruno and Gunnar Peterson. Ben's going to raise guys... his mic for me. 
How did you guys? Uh, Thank you. How did you guys start this lovely relationship? How did you guys meet? How did we meet? I'm MySpace. I, I'm not, <laughs> back yeah, in the Dizzy. I, I think it was either Tinder or Grinder or something like that. I'm not Grindr, really sure. Grinder. You started with something like yeah. Love the Grind or Rising yeah, Grind. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I actually don't know. I've known about know. Ben and Ben's work for a long time, um, and we had I, I worked with a guy, an NBA guy couple off seasons ago and the following off season he worked with ben and then he said something to me he said i, I think ben thinks you don't like it. i go what are you talking about and he said you harass me i go never harass him he said at a at a seminar and i said what are you talking about he said you asked him a question i go that's that's harassing i think i, I, think I asked a question i probably didn't understand or i didn't hear him that's half, half anyway yeah and so he said no nah, it's not cool i love ben i love you and i said dude i'll make that right right now and i yeah yeah and i reached that, out to him that's and I how said, we met. hey i heard this that's got to be a misunderstanding. No, it was a Boston move. Yeah, it was a very direct move. I <laughs> I did think. Is there another way that you didn't like? Yeah, how most people do. Like the <laughs> choke it up, way. choke it up. The buddy. chicken shit way, but there no, I got a message because yeah, I I had thought yeah they, that Gunner didn't like me, so I'm like yeah I don't think Gunner likes me, and then he got a message. He sent me a message going like dude let's talk it out, and then we did. And I said come over here. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. He came over, and then I said come over for. A Super Bowl or fight yeah, night or yeah, something, something like that. Like that. And have some drinks yeah. and salmon. <laughs> and then it was either that time or the time after that we first hooked up. Yeah. And then it's been. It was the first time. Yeah. Let's just call it. Yeah. Slut. <laughs> ben, how did you get into uh, training people? Uh, I got into training people out of college. I actually went to college and thought I was going to be in finance. Of all, and Why'd ha- you go to school? Uh, just cause I think seems Didn't. like a waste of time. Did you go to school? I did. Well, oh, kills you. So halfway through college, <laughs> I had a back surgery and they fucked it up. So then I had I took a medical leave, started rehabbing. I used to never lift weights. I actually started lifting weights after my back surgery. Mm. So started rehabbing, got into it, then took the rehab to to strength training. Realized. I like the two hour workout before my yeah. school day better than my day and got into training. Uh, yeah. Where'd you grow up? You grew up on the East coast. I grew up in New Hampshire. Okay. I grew up in New Hampshire, went to school in New York and then worked at uh, Mike Boyle strength and conditioning okay. for four ish years. And then I moved out here. Um, so East coast, my whole life. I've been out here like three and a half years. How about you? How'd you get started? I was, um, I was a fat kid. And then I was in a boarding school. With a PH. Fat with a PH. <laughs> was an how, how fat? Like the fat kid or just a fat kid? I was kid? in Weight Watchers and I was t- I had tits. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, and I had tits. I mean, it was a little obese, but it was. I wish I had met you then. I was, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Can I get uh, a hey now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I said to my mom, you know, I used to complain about my weight. And my mom said, you want to do something about it? Or you want to keep bitching about it? And obviously, as a fat kid, I was lazy. I just want to keep bitching. But uh, she took me to Weight Watchers, and um, I stuck to the program for a while. Once I had a little success, I started cheating on it, the ice cream sandwiches. Was there. <laughs> right. And then uh, went to boarding school, and uh, there were not a lot of kids in the boarding school. So if you were ambulatory, you were on the team. So mm. even as a fat kid, I was <laughs> on the cross-country team, which was not pretty. <laughs> but like, it's dark. I don't um, know what a boarding school is. What is that? It's a school where a lot of kids go. <laughs> uh, seriously? I, I don't they, know what they it is. They put them in a room and then board it up. There's a lot of things I don't know. No. That's, go ahead and like That me. is not a shocking statement. No. <laughs> right. I know. I need you to map today's, this thing out in crayon for me. Uh, I need you to map things out with a, a crayon for me. A boarding school where they send kids when they want the kids to have a different upbringing or be raised in a different country and be exposed to different experiences and languages and that. So I was at a boarding school. There you go. My father took a job in Saudi Arabia, and school went up to ninth grade. Yeah. So they put us in a boarding school in Switzerland. Oh, okay. You you went to school in Switzerland? I did. Holy crap! Uh, so how'd you get involved in personal training? I was leaving the gym one day, and a guy asked me if he could work out with me, and I thought he meant like as a lifting partner. Yeah. And I said, uh, "Sure." And he goes, "What do you charge?" And I, I locked <laughs> up, and I went, "Oh, we'll figure it out." And I went back, and a buddy of mine said you got to do that dude okay, that's <laughs> yeah. so you and i started working with that guy and then another guy and then a lady after work and i realized with two or three people mm-hmm. i could make more money than i could at my then job which i immediately quit what were you doing 
I was working in a management office for talent in LA. Mm. Uh. And then how were you able to transition from just being your everyday trainer into being able to train uh, I, celebrities and athletes and so on? I'm not just able to train them. I mean, I'm in the right place for that. You know, I'm in, I'm in a place where you can't swing a cat without hitting a slow. Right. Is that PC to swing cats? Is that, is that still a <laughs> uh, thing? Yeah. Okay, just make it sure. Yeah. No one. No it's one. not illegal, I don't think but it's if you said If you said a dog, somebody might get upset. Well, I, I can understand that. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> and so anyway, I'm here, and, and I know, you know, you start to meet people. I know people, and, and they trust you. They see you're living in the gym. You're, you're living. You're practicing what you preach. And someone said, can you work with uh, somebody that I'm working for? And it was a celebrity. And I said, sure. And then they don't always come from the same place. So they're referred by people who are in their circle of trust. So a chiropractor, a doctor, mm. an assistant, or, and then it just happens that way. And I'm centrally located. So I'm predisposed to a lot of areas in town. I'm not, you know, locked in one corner of town. Yeah. And, You're you know, underplaying it a lot. Cause there's tons and tons of trainers. There's tons of fitness centers here. There's a lot of places that people can go and they could certainly at this point probably go for much cheaper than what wow, you're that at. hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, they told me I the would, prices yeah, over I would there. I guarantee you. Yeah that if you took the top 50 trainers in town we are not as expensive well, there you go as the top 48 for sure <laughs> right. for sure yeah that's that's a good thing well, you have so much fun stuff in the gym though i mean it's insane i can see how that would be very appealing to somebody who wasn't necessarily initially on board with the idea of needing to get in shape for something Bells and Winkles, shiny trinkets. Yeah, exactly. That's how we take their land, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Ben, how did you get involved with celebrities and, and athletes and stuff? Uh, well, I trained athletes in Boston. And then here, it's like Gunnar said, it's, uh, it's just the, ge the geographic live. area. And then uh, and the trust. you train a few people and, you know, they hang out with other people and tell them. It's, you know, uh, it's, right. it's that, yeah. If one, I, Once you got some of the opportunities to train some of those people, were you nervous or scared? I mean, you've worked with Tom Brady and Sylvester Stallone, and you're working with all kinds of people as well. I mean, you get is there an intimidation factor associated with that at all? Or you're just like, um, fuck it, I'm just going to put them through the ringer. Yeah, I mean, I, I the, the workouts are the same, you know. So um, I, I'm a sports guy, so I probably uh, get starstruck a little bit with certain athletes, but right. not uh, – there has to be, um, a, there. you know, um, in the sense, like, I, like I know, you know, but in the workouts, the workout, uh, there, has, there has to be something. It would be an interesting study to watch just the pupil of somebody when yeah. someone famous yeah. comes in. It's not that you go, oh my gosh, it's someone famous, but there's a recognition. It's like, yeah. just like seeing yeah. the Eiffel Tower. You've seen it in pictures forever. And then when you get there, you go, oh my God, it's the Eiffel Tower. Not that you're, you're blown yeah. away or you start, yeah. you know, geeking out and acting weird, but you, there's a. A recognition right but i think once you get like you said the workouts the, the, workout. the workouts are the same yeah. but there are times where you'll be walking through the drugstore and see like the person you train on the magazine you're like oh shit that's the person that <laughs> we've just been working out or yeah you'll be in the gym and their oh my song God. comes on that's the radio photoshopped yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> or yeah, yeah, yeah. Look the, that good. the song comes on like i notice now i don't when I drive, I, I like tune music out, but then like if, if somebody, you know, their song comes on and you're like, Oh shit. Like I know Crank it up. that type of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, or, you know, I'll go to like, I don't know if you do this, but like, I'll go to movies that I wouldn't go to just cause somebody trains in it or something like that. Like, you know, I try to support, um, you know, that's yeah. Like all I'll, the stuff my clients do. And even if I don't yeah. have time to the movie, I'll go and buy two yeah, tickets exactly. just that to contribute to the yeah. box of it. I think you're supposed to support them. You know, just but like, to be honest, that's, it's no different. When I was in Boston, I, I worked with a ton of high school kids and I would still, I spent my nights going to high school baseball games and, uh, you know, girls soccer and you know shit like that easy, you support easy, the people you train easy <laughs> yeah did, did you it, cross paths with uh, eric cressy yeah he's he we used to lift together all yeah, the time yeah. he's one of my good buddies yeah, yeah er, we, eric and uh yeah we we lifted we've probably lifted together maybe i don't know 50 times yeah yeah he's one of my he, he actually started off as a mentor and he's the guy that helped me when i first started my website Oh, okay. I went to his gym and just like tagged along basically. And just like, I, I used to go lift there and, uh, actually funny story. I had a knee surgery and I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> I used to, well, not, not funny, but I would go Don't back and down. Don't back down. 
<laughs> was uh, wrong word, but I, I, I think I used to go there and they used to make fun of me because I would go and while I was rehabbing my knee, I would talk to them, but between every set of them doing stuff, I would knock out 10 chin-ups. Ah, nice. And uh, Pete, who runs their gym there too, right, right. was like kind of counting. I think I, I've done, I did a couple workouts there where I ended up doing like 250 or some got ungodly number of chin-ups, just like killing the day there. Right. Like, you know, uh, picking Eric's brain. And, you know, we kind of transitioned somewhere along the line from him being more of a mentor to more of a friend, but he's the man. And we've known him for a long time. We yeah. don't have a lot of... He's interaction awesome. with him right now. Yeah. We we should, I think. He's strong as shit too. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, why do you get the headphones and we don't? Um, I did only He's a one technician. Set. I only brought one set and I left them off the last interview that we did. <laughs> and um the guys told me we were peaking a little bit, so I want to make sure we don't fuck Thank this up. Peaking. You couldn't wear pants and I wanted headphones. Yeah. <laughs> so Gunnar, uh, you know, I've seen you comment on some of the stuff I've posted uh in the past. How did you learn about me? Because uh, when I saw that, I was fired up. I was like, oh, shit. Through your it's brother. fucking Gunnar Peterson. I, I, I threw your brother. I'm a huge fan of, and not just because he's in there, the room, but I, I'm a huge fan of his work. I've known his work. Uh, I still talk about his movie, yeah. Bigger, Stronger Friends. I think it was groundbreaking. We're coming uh, up on 10 years almost now. Well, okay, I'm dating myself, but at least I'm dating. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I love the film. I thought the film was terrific. I thought the film was groundbreaking. I, I, I wanted to see Bigger, Stronger, Faster 2 and 3. How did you think of my acting skills? Because I've never taken performance <laughs> see, drugs. It's funny you say that because <laughs> I didn't see it as acting. It looked so natural. Yeah, yeah. It looked natty. Yeah. Well, Na it, all it, natty. It, and I thought that was how you tied that all together. It yeah. looked all natty for a all reason. All natty acting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> did you enjoy my three-tenths of a second in the film? Oh, yeah. Is that you? Yeah, it was me. Wow. That was fucking him. Wow. It's all coming together now. You're yeah. like, oh, I, shit. I got to go watch it again. You, now you got to get it. In fact, I just recommended um, my uh, son, who's a, a junior in high school now and plays football with our nephew, Jack and Jordan. They are into lifting this. And I just told them the other day, you have to watch it. They're like, yeah, we've seen that movie. And I go, see it again. So that's how I got to know. That's how I knew of you. And through Jen Widerstrom. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, I think the world of, and, and she talks about you, and she told me about the slingshots, which I, I use every single day in the gym. Very cool. Yeah, she's awesome. She's become a good friend. Um, with my brother, did you, did you you met him kind of like recently, or you met him a few years ago? Or no, I, I met I mean, him back okay. a while back, yeah, a few yeah, times. He's my, he's my biggest fan, and, and he's just sitting across the room for us, from us, the, those that don't, that aren't watching any of this, that are uh, listening to it. But, uh, you know, he's my biggest fan. And I think sometimes, you know, some, when I meet people at Gold's Gym that he talks to, I think sometimes like your brother talks about you all the time. <laughs> Like as if they're like, they're just drained. They can't hear it anymore. <laughs> but it's great having somebody like that that yeah. uh, go to bat for you I all talk the time. about my brother all the time. He's why I tell people he's the smartest guy I've ever met. Right. He's, he's the most generous, biggest heart. And sometimes, you know, your brother, so you have the brother thing. But yeah. he's just, I think just, well, that's how we were, we were raised to be best friends. I raised my kids to be best friends. That's awesome. That's a good way to do it. Now, you know, with, it, with seeing bigger, stronger, faster, I know the steroid thing must come up quite a bit with you guys working with celebrities and getting people prepped for a movie. And does it come up a lot? I mean, a lot of people, when they, you, you mentioned Photoshop, I know Photoshop and, you know, anabolics and stuff like that, or performance enhancing drugs, however you want to say it, are, are kind of attached to each other. When they see somebody get in really good shape, like a Hugh Jackman, I think right away everyone's thinking, oh, you must be running some shit. I think if your Photoshop game is on point, you really don't need yeah. to. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about like right. that whole deal. So I get, uh, people, I get people who I, ask. I, yeah, I get a lot of people that ask, and my response is basically what I just said. Like, I don't really know. I'm probably not the guy to, or I tell mm, them to two talk or, to. Two or three potential side effects, and then they beg off. Yeah, like, hey. yeah, it's, it's, or I um, say, so you can get certain results if you do this, this, and this. And then they go, so I don't need that. I go, well, you don't need it. it. Yeah, you could do without it. Right. I think a lot of people don't understand that you can get in great shape and be really fucking strong. Duh. <laughs> and look handsome as hell. Duh. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand that you can lose a lot of weight and transform your body in really short amount of period of time. You know, like at 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 15 weeks, stuff like that. Well, most of the guys, I mean, there are a few examples of dudes that are huge, but most of the guys that you see on screen aren't really that big. It's right. not the, you know, it's really, if you get lean and, you know, 
but you look pretty big on screen. Because if they were really big, they would look too big. They would look. Well, I think a lot of the like that that uh, sort of lean but like muscular look is probably what would you say like maybe like a, for a guy of like average height like 155 to 160 pounds like not super big dudes a lot. Of, I would say the, the one thing that's shifted over the last. I mean, I've been doing this for a lot of years, but in the last 20 years, one of the shifts is guys don't say I want to be big. Yeah. They say, I just want to be lean. And, and I'd say, you want to see the separation between the muscle groups, right? And they go, yeah. Mm. And they're not going to do all the other things that are necessary to get real yeah. size. They're not going to eat right all the time. They're not going to time it out. They're not going to sleep enough. They're not going to reduce other stresses in their life. So it's probably easier just to have them. Yeah burn some body fat and have things pop out. And then they usually go, oh, no, no, I'm big enough. I'm big enough. Right. And Mark, you know, I was talking to your brother before a lot of my clients, it, you know, it's funny when I hang out with like lifters, I'm the little guy. Right. And then with, when I hang out with my clients, it's like, I want to like be muscular, but not as big as you. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like 180 pounds. Yeah. They're like, you're you like, know? what? Uh, yeah. So it's, you know, it, yeah, it, it's a different, uh, it's a different look. How do you get these people lean? What are you doing with them? Uh, Pixie dust? Magic? Yeah, pretty much. You want, you want to go or me? You know, after you. Uh, I'm just going to coattail on whatever you say. Anyway. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> I we say did, I agree yeah, 100%. Exactly. And that'll be it. Yeah. That's what I do did, too. Ditto. Yeah, no, it's it's mostly uh, mostly weights. It's like, I, but it's, uh, it's not powerlifting. You know, we do like strength circuits basically. So we'll do three or four exercises in a group and I do all full body workouts. I don't do like body part splits or things like that. So it's all full body workouts. It might be like an upper body push, an upper body pull, a lower body exercise. And you, you go, you cycle through like three or four sets, do that again. And that's, that's an hour um, with a workout. So, um, and then, but, but the one thing is we'll do like a brief little, uh, yeah. Now he goes, how about for you? I say, still show some respect. Yeah, still going. Yeah. Show uh, some respect, yeah. Mark. Um, and then, the la you know, at, we will do, like, conditioning type, like, finishers at the end and stuff like that. But the Does workout, that... yeah, exactly. Like, you know, yeah, like gun show and, like, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, but it's mostly weights. Yeah. And for yourself? Yeah, well, it's definitely mostly weights. We do a lot of stuff based on peripheral heart action. So upper extremity, lower extremity, upper extremity, lower extremity. Put something core in between, uh, try to hit all three planes of motion and throw a lot of little intervals in on people say cardio intervals. I mean, it's not cardio. It may be a cardio machine, but it's not right. cardio duration. It's 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, and then right back at it. So you're just trying to keep the heart rate up for an heart entire rate, workout big session. Big metabolic response, a lot of multi-joint stuff, heavy as they can go without f having the form deteriorate. Is the heart rate elevated for like the, you know, you warm up a little bit? Is it elevated for the full 45 minutes or hour that they go? In or LA, is it's it... usually elevated when they get here just for the traffic. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Right? They're Stress. fucking blood the pressure caffeine. to the roof. Stress. Stress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I try to get them. I mean, I do something steady state so they so they could kind of get their mind in gotcha. their place so they're not thinking Switch about Switch gears. Yes, exactly. And then start pushing them because I want that response i want it to be elevated i want them to be in that 65 to 85 right. percent of their at and then have them burn it up uh, i would say i'm similar uh one thing you, think you learn there's different you know there's different ways to skin a cat but i would say uh, is that doing PC? a lot of stuff with that cats. PC? it's a yeah. second cat right yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's two cats <laughs> dead we're in trouble this um, cat you know, so i said <laughs> I, I do things in like tri sets like three exercises at a time usually the first part of the that's workout. That's CrossFit, by the way. That's yeah. called a triplet. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's just all kipping pull-ups and shit like <laughs> that. Yeah. That's just, yeah, yeah we do. Ring fucking, muscle I don't, ups what, what, I don't even, yeah. Fucking whatever they do. Wall balls for like, you know, uh, but the first group is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, like a little bit slower. So it's not, it, you know, we'll do like the heavier stuff first and we'll rest longer and things like that. And then the second group and the, the finisher would be faster. So usually it's a little slower paced and then kind of picks up pace as we go. But uh, when we do things like um, deadlifts or uh, heavy presses or squats or, um, you know, heavy chin-ups or things like that, it's a little bit slower paced. So, so You have so many tools at your gym. 
Uh, what are you trying to do by having all those tools? Saying? You just given uh, <laughs> Jimmy Brad? <laughs> yeah. I, well, I saw. Yeah. Well, I saw some of that stuff too. You just got to be careful what you sniff in there. You don't know what what end is went or whatever. Uh, you know, you have a lot of different toys in there, and it's super cool and super exciting. Is it to try to just keep people from getting That's super fucking training? There you go. Yeah. Keep people from getting fucking bored, right. basically. Well, of course, if you think about it, your body, only does X amount of movements, right? right. I mean. For a chest, you're doing a you're doing a press. My body fly. can only do like one right now. Right. That's about it. Bowel movement. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I'm reduced. Uh, that's what I'm reduced to. Right. So if you think if the chest does pressing and a flight, then after that, what it comes down to is what's the resistance? Where's the angle? Where is your body position in space? And so it's incline, it's decline, it's flat, it's vertical, and you you just start playing with that. So the person's the body continues to have to adapt and through that adaptation comes the change, but also so mentally they stay engaged. It's not, Oh yeah, I know we're doing this again. And right. And that keeps them coming. I think that keeps them coming back. You keep it fun. You take something that would is difficult is uncomfortable and you make it less. So with so many different, so much variety, do you keep people on the same thing for a few weeks so they can kind of see or feel that progress or you just keep having flying through kind of a bunch of different stuff? Well, why don't you go first and then I'll go? Because we're a little he different in that, talent. you know, I don't train at Gunner's Gym. Again, I, uh, again, going back to different ways to skin a cat, I tend to do, I, I repeat cat, things a by lot. By the way, thank yeah, you very much. I'm, yeah, no cat is safe. <laughs> no cat is All safe. Cats matter. <laughs> we had a cat uh, in our wall at the gym yeah. at one point. But I in actually, I don't do uh, that much variety, I guess, in comparison. We repeat things more. Um, we'll do we'll we'll kind of keep continuity for a couple weeks and then switch it up and then keep continuity for a few weeks and switch it up but um you guys are so I bad be, jim mcdonald just left I'm a, yeah exactly i must i, I must be <laughs> that boring in the training but I, I i think my training Not probably my is a little right. bit more vanilla uh but um you know i i like the toys too you keep some of the same exercises in yeah, for a we, while yeah i kind of have uh you know a couple i find for each client like a few uh what I would call like barometer exercises. Like I guess in powerlifting, you guys have like the big three, which right. I don't actually do any of those with any of my clients. I don't do like barbell bench, back squat or conventional deadlift. Everybody that's listening right now is fine. Come on, I know man. Exactly. I know they're, they're so all going to say I'm a huge pussy. I know, but, um, <laughs> which isn't entirely. That's another cat plus. reference, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. But Peter I do, really is on the phone. I do think it's important to have like a few exercises, um, that you, keep in for continuity and push strength gain John and things like that. But I think, uh, the, the powerlifting big three aren't very user friendly for most people. So, um, like for example, I do a lot of, um, trap bar deadlifts instead of conventional yeah. deadlifts. Um, mix it up. I do a lot of, um, landmine or like goblet squats instead of back squats. Uh, we'll do, um, instead of bench press, I like like incline dumbbell press or push ups or, like a landmine press or things. And we'll, we'll push strength on those and kind of find, you know, everybody's different. Like, uh, people with different builds do better, especially with lower body with different exercises. So like some people might do like sumo stance. Some people might do trap bar. Some people do better with a landmine squat. Some people have really good squat form and can front squat. Most average people suck at like heavy squatting. So we don't do it, you know, uh, but we find, what they're good at and kind of keep that in there and then get the variety like elsewhere. But I like to have a few like, you know, uh, go to's. Yeah. A couple go to's that, that are different for everyone. I don't have like go to's across the board. Cause you'll find like, you know, some people when you, when they back squat, it's a really good exercise for their legs. And some right. people, the way they're built, they just good morning the shit out of it. And it's ugly. And you know, if you're, if you're powerlifting, then you have to do those lifts, but with personal training, you can kind of find the lifts. When it comes work. to, you know, powerlifting or a power yeah. lifter or a bodybuilder or someone yeah. that does weightlifting or somebody does CrossFit, I think because that's the world you're in, that that's really, you think about it all the time yeah. and you think it's the best for everybody yeah. all the time. And there's quicker and faster ways to get people in and out of different things. Different people have different goals. And yeah. what I always try to point out to people is most athletes, with the exception sometimes of the off season, they don't, they don't really have 
they, don't, they can't really afford a deadlift a lot of times, a heavy deadlift. If you go in and do a max set of deadlifts today, you're going to be kind of banged up for three or four days. And it makes the mechanics of your body, it makes warming up, it makes just everything a little bit slower for a little while. I love deadlifting, huge fan of it, huge fan of, of squats and benching, obviously. But those heavy lifts, they, they have a cost associated with them. And when you think about an athlete, of course, they can do some squatting. Of course, they can do some benching and, and things like that. But how much do they do? How heavy do they go? If it's monitored and you get in and out of it quickly, then they can still utilize it. But there's still a lot of other great exercises. People that power lift a lot of times will just be like, I can't believe it. These guys aren't, you know, they're doing lunges instead of squats. And it's like, when did a lunge become easy? Lunges yeah. are terrible. For they're sure. awful. And, and then they're such a variation, such a variety that you could do. And variations on those on that variety continue. I mean, you can in any direction with a million different ways to load it. There's, it's never boring, right? And they can a lot of them can be very challenging, especially if someone has been locked in a groove of either just squatting or just deadlifting. That was the coolest part about being at your gym just now, is you showed us something. And then based off of that same piece, you showed us like five, six, seven other things. And I know there's probably 30 or 40. Yeah, I love that. I like finding a piece that's designed for something and then playing around on it or, or, or putting people through different things on it or changing the position on it and realizing that you could do something else equally effective on the machine that wasn't necessarily set up for that. That makes it, again, for the clients, it keeps them coming back. It keeps it interesting. It seems like, you know, some of that stuff seems like it's uh, personalized. Did you kind of invent and come up with some of these ideas and concepts? Uh, it's funny. You look at them and, you, and if, if one person is uncomfortable on it or if you realize that the handle should be slightly changed for one person, the machine's probably fine. It's probably the person. Right. If nine out of ten people go, I feel this here, and then you change the position of the seat or you move the handles a little bit or you add a, a, a place to, to lock it you know, from the outset or at the ending, then you realize it's the piece, so you have to modify it. And that's not that's not hard to do. We're in such a we're so lucky to be in this city where you can get anything done. I mean, you can get all your stuff reupholstered in two days. Yeah. So you can find a metal worker and have them add a handle. They just come right into your gym and work on it. Yeah. We have a guy who meets us at five AM and he, he comes in there and he looks at it and you explain it and he'll haul it out and he'll come back in forty eight hours. And it'll have it'll be spot welded and powder coated, and you go. Yeah, thanks very much. That's exactly how I wanted it. Ben, are you part of this uh, five a.m. workout crew that Fuck they do? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Actually, the right, first Gunner, time I met and Gunner, crew, he, like invi 5 he invited me over, and he's like, "Yeah, my crew, we all lift at five a.m. Anytime you want to come over, you're welcome." And I will, and I was like, "I will be there zero times <laughs> ever." Thanks for the invite, but even if I'm awake, I'm not gonna. I won't be there. It's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, uh, but there's nothing heroic I, about it either. No, we're all getting our workouts in. It's just, it's, yeah, I it's mean, like people say it's crazy you get up that early. And, and I thought it is, it's crazy you go to bed that late because if you right. get up that yeah. early, going to bed, we're all working the same hours, we're all up the same amount. I mean, it's not, yeah, I will officially never be there. You know, what you were saying though, one thing that's, uh, it, it's funny when you were asking Gunner, like, do you come up with these exercises? The answer is like, probably yes. And, um, sometimes, uh, people tell me like, oh, you're like creative with those exercises, but correct me if I'm wrong. It's, it's funny when you just train people all day long and you see eight or nine different types of people, it's not like I'm sitting there and you probably aren't too like, what new like shit can I come up with today? No. But what it is, is like you see people uh, fuck up the same thing over and over again yeah. and then just kind of go, and then it just hits you like, for example, I really like um, single leg Romanian deadlifts for glutes and hamstrings. But if you've noticed, like almost everyone sucks at them in the entire world. Right. It's like I had a woman tell yeah, me like- They're brutal. Yeah, and she's, well, she's like, this feels like a sobriety test. And you watch people like <laughs> wobble around and you're like, it kind of is a sobriety test. Like, yeah. I'm not like, you know, I know that you're not getting a good workout for your glutes and hamstrings because you well, look like you're going to tip over every time. Funny you said that. When you I know? have people do it and I see them wobble, I go, DUI. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I shit. But, oh, yeah, like, so done. that's funny. So, your exactly. client's coming so out for example, <laughs> um, an exercise that I really like that I've showed to a lot of people, and I don't, who knows if you thought of it originally or not, is right. using the landmine for, mm -hmm. uh, and, and somebody said, how do you think of that? And I'm like, Everyone I train sucks at it. And so I just kind of hit me one right day me and go, long. yeah, you're like, well, if 
it's not as unstable with that. And now mm-hmm. people can use, you know, 100 to 150 pounds and get a, a workout, but it's not and like... you can do it from either end. Yeah, and you just, yeah, and you just go, it, all that stuff comes, like, you, from just seeing, you know, uh, the guy we were talking about, he's like seven feet tall. You know, you see somebody that's Jesus. seven feet tall and the what works for me, who's like damn near a midget, like <laughs> doesn't work for him. Like, I'll go, yo, man, do this. Like, um... I was telling you, I really like landmine squats because the bar is on an arc and you sit back. Well, I learned with a lot of the basketball guys, they're too tall. It actually doesn't work the same way that it works for me or it works for you guys or it works for like maybe some of the women I train. It just doesn't work. And then you go, oh, shit, sorry, dude, that was actually a bad idea. And then you have to go back to the drawing board, you know, and that's really the ideas come from just like being in the gym all day. That's an interesting point. You know, Um, you get excited, you know, to train people and coach people and you learn the things that you learn and whatever camp you're from or whatever thing you've learned that you love, you're going to try to basically instill that in whoever walks through the door. Yeah. But you have somebody that walks through the door at seven feet tall and you have them try to do a power clean and you're like, oh my God, this is just not working out so well. But Ben, what Ben said, that's a, that's an evolved mindset to go dude, bad idea. Because a, a lot of trainers, that's Captain Ahab, they're going down with their own ship before they admit. <laughs> they're in love with no, their concepts. Right. And before they admit, bad idea yeah. for you. So I write, all. Um, I think that's uh, that's a terrific point, I think, to hear from someone at your level. Because you could easily just say, dude, you're doing it wrong. Or, oh, my God. Or, no, like, no, no, no. Yeah. And I'm the same. as I, 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 write every, I write a different workout for every person every day. And I print them up. And I walk around. And it's my little piece of paper. It's my little personal Bible. It's, it, but it's it's I tell them it's it's not set in stone. It's a template, meaning if I watch this move and I realize, whoa, bad idea, we're off that. I'm not. It's not yeah. worth. There's no upside to having you do that and either risk injury or or start to hate me or whatever. I yeah. Really how move along. how is how are there not other options? You know, there's so many other options in the gym. There's so many other things you can do. And if a client's telling you that their knee hurts. Are right. you are you that much of an asshole that you're not going to listen to him and you're going to make him squat? You know, I'm not. Well, yeah. no, I don't think. One specific one. thing I think would be interesting, given the, your listeners, that I want to talk about because it's probably the biggest programming shift I've had in the last three or four years, or not programming shift, but biggest change I've made. Because I'm a pretty basic guy, and I um I have a little meathead in me too, where I like to lift heavy, I like to deadlift and things. But when you were talking about deadlifts, um. I told you I use the trap bar a lot. And Mm -hmm. one thing I switched, again, from watching people butcher it all the time is, you know, a lot of guys just like feel like they have to like deadlift, come hell or high water. And, you know, (laughs) every single week, because I love deadlifts, but it's funny because people argue about like what exercises are dangerous on the internet. And they're always like behind the neck, like pull downs or like Mm -hmm. leg extensions or whatever. And calling a spade a spade, like, Probably the most backs have been fucked up from like deadlifts and squats. The most shoulders get fucked up from the bench. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do them, but uh, they're also I, the movements where people are predisposed yeah, yeah. to try to and go they heavy. go heavy. Yeah. You know, you but, can lift the most weight doing those think, movements. Um, yeah. One thing that you notice when you're deadlifting, because because I very rarely have my clients do a one rep max. It's always for multiple reps. Um, and with that said, the first rep is usually the ugliest, breaking the bar off the floor. So what we do now is I have a hex bar that goes on the pins because I right. think the hex bar is just a lot more user friendly for most people. Some people like myself. Go I to ha- BenBruno.com. He sells a hex bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right yeah. I don't sell shit. I'm like the dumbest business <laughs> same, guy out there. Same. Yeah, same. I don't sell right anything. Right there with you. Uh, I, yeah, nothing. But I, I hex bar uh, with squat shoes and I, and I like to keep a more upright torso. Gotcha. I told you I have a, you know, but what we do is we put the bar elevated like um how most guys do rdls and we walk it out and then start the set right so well um, and who gives a shit that it's not a regular deadlift yeah you no, know zero well, people but what i'm saying is like i bet your are no i mean a lot of people better. actually do you know they, yeah. they make such a big deal like yeah. that's not a real deadlift it's yeah. like well but, maybe i'm not but, but trying way, to execute it and i've had the same thing and they've said that to me you know that's not, and i go so tell me walk me through what happens did the deadlift please come in and do i get a, yeah do i get a citation exactly. first or do they <laughs> shut me down right away i can't tell you how many times people tell me i cheat or my clients cheat because we use hand straps i'm like there's no fucking rules like right. i use hand straps <laughs> like <laughs> like the, it's not cheating because the <laughs> internet yeah. taught them yeah that hand, the just, straps are cheating right. yeah and the university of internet yeah exactly like uh, yeah, yeah. Just because you do a layup doesn't mean it's not a shot. Doesn't yeah. mean it doesn't count for two points. Yeah. You know, yeah. 
Right. Everyone, the second they get on a basketball court, they want to try to hit a three. <laughs> and you watch it. It's hilarious. Yeah. Right. Lower percentage shot. Yeah. Right? It's a lower percentage lift or higher percentage of injury or higher percentage yeah. of missing. Right. Without those straps, when you go as heavy as you go, more likely to get injured. Yeah, and more, and I just more can't go. To yeah, fail the yeah, and, and for me, like I'd, I'd much rather some like internet tough guy think I'm a pussy and I can right. use 100 more pounds on the deadlifts than I get, can't hold the bar. Like, right. And you think about how would that be all that different from uh, you engaging in running and you're really excited about running, but the shoes that you're wearing are killing you. Yeah. And you're a big fan of Nike and you, you got these running shoes, but they, they hurt all the time. And you try different ones and you try different ones. You're going to try the ones that allow you to run and allow you to be comfortable. It's no different than that when you go in the gym, but you got these people that have such kind of hard ons for like a specific yeah. way that they, yeah, they have to lift. And then not only they have to lift that way, but everybody else has to too. Right. Yeah. You do too. <laughs> it, it's yeah. suddenly religion and they're the uh, uh, judge, jury and executioner on mm-hmm. whether or not you've actually performed the exercise. Well, and they gauge every exercise as like one of my pet peeves is the, the vernacular of, um, main lifts and assistance lifts and like does this is this exercise is only good if it aids the main lift well if you're not competing there's no main lift it doesn't matter so uh you know you could change that to say like a main lift is something if your goal is to get a better butt the main lift is the best butt exercise what's the main lift you know what i mean like model yeah the best main lift for an action hero yeah like you know um if you're training a, a model it, you'd be an idiot to be doing heavy bench and stuff like that, yeah. you know. Uh, so you'd you know, also be without a client in about ten days. Yeah, exactly. Right. So when you when you judge exercises based on if they feed other exercises, well, what if you don't care about that other exercise? You're just trying to, right. you know, look better, right. feel better, or whatever. And then you have, you know, the flip side of that is you end up with some really good pros from some exercises, like a huge pro of powerlifting is the fact that it allows you to lift the most amount of weight. Mm-hmm. Sure, but that's also can be a negative. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to lift so much weight, you have potential to hurt yourself. When it comes to the Olympic lifts, they force you to use less weight. The clean and jerk out of the two, you can use the most weight. And the snatch, you use. Sorry for saying snatch, but you can <laughs> use. You can use. Uh, can you get in trouble for that? No, I can't. <laughs> you're not allowed to use. No. Not, it's not an animal snatch, so Peter's yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's a whole new category. Hey, no. <laughs> But you, but some of the exercises where you're going to use less weight, such as some of the single leg movements or anytime you get into doing a dumbbell, a lot of people think that's not a good thing because I'm, oh, I'm doing assistance work and it's, you know, I can't go as heavy. Yeah. But it's like, no, that's actually a positive. Like the barbell movements are great because they're barbell movements and they allow you to lift a certain way. And the assistance exercises are great because they force you to use less weight and they're challenging in their own way. Yeah. Each thing has like its place and people just get so... They get so yeah. butt hurt when you're not okay. doing their exercise. I get dumbbell snatch for me in the gym. I said it, you you aired that out. So uh, <laughs> I, I aired out my snatch. That's one of my that's one of my go to uh, explosive movements in the gym. Yeah, and I love it, and I think people like it. I think it makes them feel at least the people with me, it makes them feel athletic, and and they understand the feeling, and then they can we can progress that as needed if needed. How and do it, you figure out how to train some of these people like? Each person is so different. We talked about this many times on the podcast before, but even more recently today with uh, Heath Evans, who was uh, coached by Bill Belichick, and he said Bill Belichick was really, really good at really yeah, good that at reading. Guy, that, that's probably the person in life I want to meet the most. Bill oh my Belichick. god, he's amazing! But he said that Bill Belichick had a really, really good sense of reading people. He he, he might know that hey, he needs to be coached this way, and when I talk to Mark, I need to tell him he's a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. But this guy needs a pat on the back. I agree with that. How do you try to, you know, how do you try to decipher There's a little bit of how you're going to treat certain people? Yeah. But you're talking about the treatment of them or the training of them? Uh, the training of them. For the training, I listen to their goals. Then I listen to what their sports history is, their injury history, their activity history, their fitness history, and all those are different. You get some things written down and stuff too, or is it more just going out no, of your head? No, I don't. Um, when they come to the gym, I don't do. I don't spend a lot of time. I don't do the assessments. I I get them moving, get them started because I know that there's going to be uh, that the feeling of that is going to translate into a positive association with the gym versus uh, talk, too much talk. Then they're right. kind of like, dude, it's a lot of time. What are we doing here? So I talk to them about those things, and then I'm looking at their bodies, thinking, if that were my physique, how would I want to shore it up? Other than an athlete, then you go, 
for that person's sport, what do they need most? Right. Is it lateral explosiveness? Is it is it vertical? Is it just straight ahead speed? So you factor those in, and then I've taken I've usually had some of these questions uh, on the phone or on text, and then I've. I take a shot in the dark with writing the workout. So I have something to work off of. But again, as we progress through it, uh, I shift, I reserve the right to change that on the fly. Ben, how do you work with uh, an athlete versus like a model? And I mean, I guess even furthermore, like how do you even get in that position? Because I would just think that people would identify the training of like a supermodel or something like that, or even an actress or actor would be a little bit different than the way you might uh, treat or train, sorry, uh, an NBA basketball player. Well, I think part of it goes to, like you were saying, like how you start with new clients. It's very similar to uh, what I, what I do is very similar to what you said, but uh, when people start, I usually ask them to hop on the phone for a little bit before the first workout. Um, And almost the same, we talk about goals, injury history, previous training history. And I tell them, you know, we do this phone call so that I'm not wasting your time on the first day and we can actually get a workout. And I also do that so the they feel... the same way feel, you approach dating, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's like pull and pray, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I would say, um, yeah, So, and part of it is just so they feel like, you know, you're in it, you care, and that type of thing. And then I do, I actually do do like a quick movement assessment by quick. I mean like 30 seconds and, uh, I watch them walk in. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, but I think that you were, you know, I, I understand what you're saying because I think a lot of trainers do kind of have a niche. Like I work with athletes or just this specific type of athletes. And I probably have, uh, like you do, you know, the most varied clientele out there. My youngest client Mm -hmm is 14. My oldest is 68, Mm. uh, guys, girls, athletes, non-athletes, the whole bit. But, uh, I think that people don't feel weird about it because they're not all doing the same workout. It's not like, uh, it's not like the basketball guy walks in and sees himself doing the same workout as the model. They're, they're just doing different stuff. And you, you basically, I mean, I, I sometimes call myself captain obvious. I basically take people's goals and they go you know hey i want to like work on my butt i want to like get this damn area under my arms and my triceps and i'm like all right like pretty much all we're going to do that is like butt triceps and that fucking area under your arms (laughs) right do that whereas like a basketball guy it's like i want to jump higher whatever you know yeah I, i try to train i try to infuse a certain amount of athletic movement into all of them. I think a lot of people, Mm -hmm. if you look at where they started in life, you know, from kids on a playground to whether they're sitting in the office or or riding a a, a team bus between stadiums, a lot of their movement patterns are regressed. So they haven't, they haven't spun quickly this way or turned this way or thrown anything down on the ground hard. And I try to bring a lot of that back just so they feel more comfortable and competent using their body in as many ways as they can performance based right yes you know it's an interesting thing that sometimes uh when you run into these different coaches and different people and you communicate with all these different people um you know we've had we've been fortunate to be good friends with kelly sturette our our mobility wad uh, master and uh kelly sturette said in a seminar one time that it's really rare for most people to even get below parallel had to have their hips lower than where their knees are and something that i just started thinking about i was like trying to think about each day that you go through and if you're not like a lifter you're not somebody that does some squats then you really don't get into that range of motion even when you take a dump you're still unless you you drop something on the floor yeah yeah you're still uh you know yeah unless you squat all the way down to the ground when you you pick stuff up in the gym i did i saw that and so when i have people say i can't squat i go well hang on did you go to the restroom what do you mean just sit there for a second. You're right. You're squatting. I'm not saying you have to actually load two times body weight, but I am saying let's get you down there. Let's right. get you to move that and see. And and they go, wow, I didn't think about that. Sure you did. It's, it's It brings up an interesting thing just because – People might not have done any of these movements for years. And you're talking about throwing stuff and slamming stuff down. Even something as simple as throwing a football could end up being some form of training for somebody just because they haven't done it in forever or swinging something or Mm -hmm. twisting, as you're kind of mentioning. Um, It can be really effective ways. And it's taken them through range of motions that I haven't done in years. And if you think on a 
on a more physiological level, just moving the blood around through the joints and all that, the, the, circu the circulatory improvement the, the, that makes them feel better. It, it does clear out the cobwebs and they leave feeling, wow, I didn't know I could do that. It's been mm -hmm. a minute since I've done that. And, and I, for us in our gym, the positive association with what went on in there, I think is what furthers the business. So it keeps them coming back. Yeah. I was going to ask if you felt like if you felt like there was a psychological difference between Shoot. training an yeah uh, an average person and a celebrity, or I, but obviously you're saying that you're using this with all your clients to give that that feedback, that positive feedback. Yeah, I may have jumped on, on your question. I, I would think I would say for us, um, everybody at the end of the day cares about feeling better and looking better. In no particular order depends yeah. on the person. Really, we're a very visual society. People do want to look better. You can say you don't care, but at the end of the day, you do look in the mirror and go, "Shit, yeah. what happened here, yeah, man? Everybody I'm cares, a wreck." Yeah. Well, it, it's been my experience that with athletes, um, sure, there's going to be a, a little bit of vanity, but the ones that are the most driven could care less. If you say, "If we do this, your performance is going to improve, but you may not look as good." they'll take that every single time. Mm. And I don't, to me, that's the one thing that doesn't translate to general public. That makes sense. These people make a lot of money. They do a lot of great things. How do you keep them interested? And how do you, how do you, uh, how do you just, uh, you know, basically just get them to buy it all in to what you're doing? Me, you, I'm in. Rochambeau. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I think a lot of it has to do with like creating a good rapport and a good relationship. Like the first couple times, um, you know, uh, yeah. And then from once you have a good relationship, I think people are willing to kind of go to bet. Right. For forward. us, we try to keep it fun. Yeah. We try to make it yeah. so that it's that positive association and, and they're going to get what they came there to get. Plus they're going to leave feeling not just good physically, but they feel good about themselves. They did something good. They, they, they paid into themselves and that they can, I always tell them everything we do in the gym services, everything you do outside of here, which means right. you'll be better on the job, lower rate of absenteeism, decreased risk of injury, uh, more patience towards your spouse, more patience towards your kids, uh, resistant to disease, all these things. And they, th that carries over. That's to me, it's a, such a no brainer to pay into that a little bit to benefit from that outside. Right. Ben, you mentioned uh, having a mentor. Do you have any mentors? Oh, mentors? I, I mean, I, I've i attended a ton of seminars. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you look up to, I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of people across uh, uh, the vast uh, landscape of the fitness industry. A ton. I mean, your brother, you, Ben, you know, present right. company. Um, I've seen guys from... Pavel with the kettlebells, um, right? You, Paul Check, you, you can't mark uh, Juan Carlos Santana, uh, Mark Verstegen. There's so many guys out there that do so much good stuff, and and girls and women. Jen Widershaw. There, mm. there are a ton of people. I mean, Jillian Michaels. I've never met her, but you can't, in my opinion, you can't not respect what she's been able to do. Yeah. In this field, how she took it and ran with it and launched it. Uh, respect. I mean, it may not be the way somebody else would have done it or the way I would have done it, but you got to go. That's, you know, Bob Harper, the, the, the trainers that, that put their lives on pause and, and go on TV, whether it's for the right reasons or the wrong reasons, I'm not going to throw that judgment call out there, but you go, man, you guys are, it's a, it's a tough gig out there. It's tough to, to separate yourself from the masses and, and to rise above or to, or to even be singled out. I say hats off to all of them and, the more they do, whether you're just sitting at home making fun of them or right. you're sitting yeah. at home wishing that were you, you have. I think you have to give them credit. You know, go all the way back, go Jack Elaine, go Arnold, go Sly, go the guys. Your brother mentioned in this movie. Yeah. How can you? How can you deny Dwayne Johnson? I mean, he's he's brought back something that's been gone. It's it's the resurrection of that action hero. He's he's the guy. He's right. the guy. Period. How have you built all this? You know, it, if you if you you know you got a beautiful house, your gym is insane. How are you able to build it? Because you were putting up points on the scoreboard long before social media came around. Now, you know, now the game has changed quite a bit. You know, it used to just be word, word of mouth, but I now there's a, a lot of other things. To me, I had a kid who said to me, a trainer in his forties, say to me, 
it was so much easier to get a leg up in fitness before social media. You really had it easy. My knee jerk reaction was to smack him <laughs> because I said, how you mean it was easier to get a message out when there were less ways to get the message out and there were less people receptive to that yeah, message. The fuck are you write someone write somebody a letter or something. I mean, exactly. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Direct mail. I, I, had Smoke to, phone calls. I had to go the home pigeon. and listen to my answering machine. <laughs> right. It, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I, I, it's hard. It's you outwork them. I'm not, I'm, you said average height, average weight. I'm right there with you. I'm right there. 5'10", 190 something. And I'll, I, I'm not stronger. I'm not bigger. I'm not faster. Wait a minute. Hey, hey. Uh, but gimmick infringement. But I'll, I'll 20 just bucks. outwork you. I'll just, and, and it's not even you. I, there's a great quote from someone that says, I, I'm not competing against, I think it's a Tiger Woods quote. I'm not competing against the other golfers. I'm, comp I'm competing against the course and against myself. And I think if you take that tack, you're less likely to piss people off. It doesn't really matter what somebody's doing in their lane. If I'm staying in my lane and just outworking. Well, let, let you collaborate with people too. If you don't feel constantly competitive with them. I reach any trainer who reaches out to me. I, I say, Hey, if I, I, we respond on some level, whether it's me or somebody who works with me. And then I'll say, you know, if you're nearby, I, I had a kid this morning from San Francisco, stop by for our 5 a.m. work. I, I try not to take too many meetings in the middle of the day because it's a bad use of my time. But what mm -hmm. I say is, we're, we work this out. is a really bad use of your time. <laughs> you're doing, doing a great job today of doing that. <laughs> but we're sitting down. Um, but I say, come by at five, come by, work out with us. Some yeah. guys go, a.m.? Yeah, dude, but I'm at home. I'm trying to be home by 5 p.m. I got kids, my wife. So, should I come work out? And I think you keep your doors open like that. Mm -hmm. I want to hear your ideas. You don't have yeah, to do open them to me. And I said, fuck. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> and he's repeated it. Well, I also <laughs> think if you were 20 and some of the guys you mentioned earlier, like a Paul Check or, or some of the guys you looked up to, if they said, hey, yeah, be here at 5 a.m., you you wouldn't ask another question. You'd be like, oh, I'll see you tomorrow. You know, you just if be. If they offered that to me? Yeah. I'd be there at 420. Yeah. yeah. You'd just I'd be sitting in my car at 420. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> two seconds i wouldn't even flinch right my situation was a little different getting in because I, I it was have you ever read the book outliers it's essentially Not talking about like you know deliberate practice but part of it is just luck and being in the right place at the right, right time and so out of college um i told you i interned in finance and uh this guy uh connect when i told him i wanted to be a trainer connected me with his kid's trainer and this guy promised me a job. So my whole last year of college, I just thought I was going to have this job training. And like two days before I graduated, he pulled the rug out from under me oh. and was like, oh, I have to hire my cousin. Sorry. That motherfucker. So I'm wow. like, well, shit, I got no job. So I went back. How's to, his gym doing now? He's fucked. Well, and, well so <laughs> as luck would have it. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I'll. I won't say his name, but fuck that guy. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope he—I hope he's a fan here, so he, he's listening. Who's <laughs> not a fan? So, of what happened was, I was reading um, T Nation and clicked through a link on one of Mike Boyle's articles and realized that he lived like 30 minutes from my mom's house. So, again, just right place, right time. They have this unpaid internship opportunity. I'm six months past the deadline. It says you need a certification, which I didn't have. It says you needed a exercise science degree, which I didn't have. And you needed like a bunch of other shit that I didn't have. So I just <laughs> drove down to Boyles and was basically like, uh, you like know, I, I actually have no ostensible qualifications <laughs> to be here, uh, but I'm willing to work. And But you want to do it. Yeah. Which and I said, I'll deal. do it, you know. And Mike was basically, he took a flyer and, um, you know, I'm very grateful for that. I, I It's a really, it was an awesome uh, job. And there I met a guy named Steve Bunker, who there's two gyms at under Mike Boyles. There's the big gym and the smaller gym. Steve runs the smaller gym. Steve is, a, is also a badass. He doesn't do the internet stuff, so people don't know about him, but he's super smart and ended up, he's, he's kind of like my pseudo dad now. You know, my, my dad passed away, but Steve's like mm -hmm. kind of like a dad slash, like he helped me with training and all that shit happened from just like this other guy being a dick and like <sighs> pulling the job out from under me even, you know, uh, right. I ended up at, at a gym that's like a very well-regarded gym, and I learned a lot, a lot and, more than I would have. And not to tie it all together, but from there, you just outworked everybody else. Maybe. Eh, you I just stayed yeah, the course. I, I, and yeah, and then, you know, and then I've met 
nice people along the way that have helped. And, you know, you mentioned Eric, uh, again, kind of an outlier situation. Eric's super successful with that type of stuff. And I just went and hung out and he gave me advice on starting a website. Um, you know, uh, and along the way I've, you know, kind of, right. I guess just right place. Connor, right you, you mentioned how you started training some people. Somebody just kind of asked if they could work out with you type deal. You started charging people and started getting more into it. Uh, was there a lot of formal education that, so that happened before or after that period? So I would say initially what I knew about training, working out, nutrition, recovery, uh, was from magazines, books, and I was, and I read them nonstop. I read them in college, and people were like, you're a goof, you read all that, you're a weirdo. Okay, that's what I liked. It was interesting to me. Um, when I started to see, when the clients started increasing, I thought it was, it, was, it was incumbent upon me to learn more and be better, which I did. And I sort of thought, well, I'll do this part-time a little bit, and then when I saw it, I can do this big time, I started learning more and more and I would seek it out and I would take weekends and I would fly to Chicago for a seminar, San Francisco for a seminar, Phoenix for a seminar. And I found the guys who were at the time and probably still to this day, um, the, 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 the oracles, you know, the guys who you go that Paul check, yeah. I got to go to a Paul check seminar. How could I not go to a Paul check seminar? I keep seeing this guy who's Paul check. I want to know everything I can about him. And I would go more than once to a seminar. I would go to one of Pavel's seminars. I Me and my brother, there's like five or six names that we just would talk about all the time. All the time. Louis Simmons, Same. Paul Check. I mean, the list. Juan Carlos, Charles Poliquin. Dan yeah, Dan Duchesne. We just oh, sit yeah. there and just, like, just these names are just popping out all the time. It's all the hell we ever thought I about. Go, I got to go listen to this guy. Right. I want to find it. It doesn't matter where it is, what it costs. I got to go. And then I'd come back Monday and I would have clients who would say to me, oh my God, were you at one of your seminars this weekend? Because <laughs> we're, we're changing it up and we're incorporating new things. And, and I couldn't get enough of it. And then I thought, I got to get certified, get one cert. And then you go, wait, there's a higher one? I got to get that. I got to get that. And you would just keep going after those so you could rack those up and say, I've got those, even though clients don't ask, don't care, at least in my world. So I have those to fall yeah. back on, you know? And they say that uh, education can get you a job, but self-education can make you a fortune. Who said it, that, you? <laughs> I just made it up just now. Terrific. I'm going to use It's that. the wine. Mine? <laughs> it's empty. Is it some kind of brain wine? Yeah, I think so. That's, a, that's terrific. Yeah, I think I, I would. Well, because when you seek it out yourself, you're going to school. And some motherfucker is telling you what you have to do, right? And there's going to be, even my brother studying something so specific as film school, He's got to film some black and white shit that has, you know, doesn't have people talking in it. And he's got all these projects that he doesn't even want to do. He's got to take a lot of classes that he doesn't want to take. He's got to learn a lot of shit that he doesn't want to even bother to learn. That's current? But no, just, no, he, he, <laughs> he did has, it. He many, has more tacit knowledge in he, that industry than yeah, no, he did the years of school. He did it many years ago. And yeah. I think the foundation of education is awesome. And I think that, that, that he has that backbone. Uh, he has that structure of going through school and going through USC film school. It's one of the most prestigious film schools in the country. But at the same time, I think that there's nothing better than you forcing something. People use the word organic all the time, and I don't know why, because anything that's great is fucking forced. Oh, yeah. It's something that you force and something you go after with every bit of your fiber, every bit of every day, every day, yeah. nonstop, you're going after it. And when you started seeking out more and more information, I believe that's what was happening is you, Still. you're getting hungrier and hungrier and you're like, fuck, I need more. I need to learn more. Well, hold on. That didn't make that much sense to me. I needed to learn more about that. My brother's uncovering all these things about uh, the keto diet. And you uncover one thing and then it opens up a whole nother thing. And you just continue to learn and learn and learn. But if you didn't seek it out for yourself, mm -hmm. you would, it would be impossible for, impossible for you to ever find the truth. Well, education never really tells you what works for you. It tells you what maybe worked for somebody else. And I think you have to find out on your own what works for you. In the education feeds that, but it's not the only, it's not the end game. It's so easy nowadays. It's, I mean, it's. Hilarious. The guy said I was going to be relevant back then. It's Google it. It's the bullshit meter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think this diet hold wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's right there all day, every day. You can pick up the, the, oh, yeah. the fact that the, all the 
exercises used to come out of two or three magazines that were released once a month and not at every newsstand. <laughs> yeah, Other than that, it was hanging around a gym. You can go on Instagram and in 15 minutes have an exercise library of 600 moves. It yeah. can create accelerated learning for sure. Yeah. Well, I told you I was a sociology major, but my last two years of college, I spent bringing my laptop and reading like T Nation and shit in every class I was in. It was like, it would be sociology. I'd be reading Elite FTS, T Nation, like we you know, met because buying, of T Nation. Yeah, buying way. like you know. Uh, don't yeah, let's yeah. not talk about books, our internet yeah. <laughs> relations so. stuff like that. Yeah, I've always now that now they now they're thinking we're weird. <laughs> you know, one thing we're different about. I actually like don't really like or care for like certifications but i still read everything i just I, I, i've i've always like i don't know like the idea of the certification seems stupid to me i'm like probably barely qualified to even be a trainer but i like on paper somebody can like, like uh, but i'm super into like you're barely qualified to hold that microphone yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> well yeah <laughs> Uh, to me, the certification yeah. is, is like I yeah. say, okay, that's you yeah. Know, I think I'm a great driver. I still went and got a license. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. just no, because sure. I, I thought <laughs> yeah. if, if anybody stopped me, I could show it to them. I, I yeah. feel like if anybody questions me, it's a great example. If anybody yeah, questions exactly. me, I'm like, look at the certification. Now finish the set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean I'm the law, but it means <laughs> yeah, I'm running shit in my gym. Let's look at yeah. guys. I think it means you're the law. Yeah, oh, look, <laughs> but but also the certification doesn't mean you're a good trainer. It means you bothered to take the time to learn a certain amount of things about the field yeah. and then regurgitate them at test time. It doesn't mean you're good. And there are, there are terrible trainers who are certified and there are great trainers who are not. Yeah. So for sure. was there, when I look at your gym and then we look at this beautiful home, um, was there a moment that changed everything for you? Uh, my, I did an infomercial years ago and that, that was, yeah, that was pretty big. That was pretty, um, that was changing. It right. Changed. It, it put you on a, it put me in a place that I never saw fitness taking me and it, and it was, it changed things. Sure. It changes things financially. It changes things for how basically people... changed uh, you getting money back from the government at the end of the year versus you paying the government. Was, <laughs> were you there? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. It. I've been there. Yes. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and it changes also how you're looked at within the industry. And certain people think automatically that you're good or someone who they should listen to, and other people right out of the gate hate you. What I was think, the infomercial for? Uh, it was a stability ball, series of workouts on a stability ball mm -hmm. called Core Secrets. And um, So you build up a name and reputation and then... You get in with somebody on a project, and that's kind of how it happened. Or I, I was approached by the infomercial company. Okay. And they said do we want to do this or this. What do you think? And I said I would do this or this. And then I was lucky. I never asked my clients for anything. I don't ask them for memorabilia or right. pictures or any of that. And at the time, I thought this is when I have to ask. And I said, Would you do a testimonial for this? We all train this way. We've all used this product in my right. gym. And they were gracious enough almost across the board to say, yeah, sure, no problem. And it was it was a level of, of uh, celebrity or, or, or person that you don't always see on those infomercials. And I think it was I think it was over the top. The but thing that I find kind of cool about that is is, you know, there there is this turning point. That helps change things. Uh, maybe you have uh, better financial means, which gives you freedom to do some other things. Yeah, totally. Maybe to buy equipment or t to uh, take a trip to go to a seminar. Yeah, take yeah, a trip sure. to go to a seminar, or like you mentioned earlier, you had some stuff in your garage, and then you kind of like just wiped that whole house out and knocked out the second floor and turned the whole damn thing into a gym, which is pretty uh, mind-boggling. But what I always try to share with people is there's not going to be like any one thing that really changes things. Because if you just dropped off after that infomercial, if you were celebrating and you were excited and you started getting into drinking or drugs or any of these kinds of things, got distracted or, or you were complacent, uh, you would fall off and you wouldn't be where you are today. So it's, you can't have these things that are fucking cool that happen. Oh shit, I got to train Tom Brady. That was fucking awesome. But then it's on to the next one, right? Also, it's on to the next one. Yeah, of course. And what you're saying I mean, I, you talk about the turning point, and I look back on it now and realize that at the time, I didn't go, I'm at a turning point, because it doesn't turn like that. It's 
<clears throat> it's over the course of time and years. And then when you're away from it, you, you're able to, you have a different perspective on it. Yeah. I mean, you've had the chance to be on national television and all, all kinds of different things. And obviously it, it increases your profile. Sure. But literally it's just like another notch on the belt. Right. Yeah. That's and then you think how can, you know, it comes down to staying relevant. Hey, we talked about this, someone, uh, that we both know once I, I did an article and something and the, and the guy said, it's unbelievable that you've been able to stay relevant for 20 years. And I don't know, I took it as a compliment, like, thanks. Right. <laughs> you think I'm relevant? In retrospect, he may have meant, who the fuck are you to be relevant? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know how he meant it, but I'm, I'm going <laughs> to take the positive. Yeah. So it's not that it's notches your belt, but as you go, you know, what can I do today? Who did you work with today? What are you doing tomorrow? How are you going to tweak tomorrow's workouts? What am I going to do the next week? It's, I don't look at it like a check, check, check. I like the idea of getting a client and keeping a client versus always getting new ones. Who's the best person you've worked with, Ben? Like from, a, you know, out of the celebrities. I know, you know, you, you got some uh, clients that, that may, may listen to this, but just, uh, you know, who's, who's the hardest worker, who's the easiest, who's the best, or who's the biggest pain in the ass? Um, that last one's kind of a minefield. Yeah, so yeah, I would say, um, I mean, I like different clients for different reasons. Like my, you know, a good client to me is somebody that I enjoy the hour, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, right. yeah, I'm you not, look down and go, not, wow, it's 50 yeah, minutes. I'm not really what? sure, which is, uh, and to be honest, it, it's, uh, you know, Gunner talked about he he prides himself on keeping clients. You know, we we talk about this all the time. I actually don't really have like I don't really take new clients that often. Uh, I kind of have my crew that's just like been the crew, and that's because I like them and keep it moving. Been saying, so uh, training the same set of people. Yeah, for a few I mean, years. I kind of have the same people, and really, that's great. none of them have really dropped out. So right, sometimes they travel, and rather than fill the time, I know they're going to come right back. So I just sort of have my my crew and. Right. Uh, you, you know, when you're tra- extra I mean, coffee that day, yeah, but you can't really have, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when they're gone, yeah, but you can't really have like that many people when you're, you know. But I, I really, I, you know, I picked a group of clients that I really enjoy. Um, so yeah, I'm not really, I can't really say. And, I, I like the people who work the hardest, yeah, yeah. I like the people who, who are not trying to skip that, like when you say one more and they go, that was 12, we go, that was 11. I like when they go, really? And then they go, bang, bang, and do two more. <laughs> right. yeah. No, dude, I was counting. And you're like, why are we debating this? Could have been done with the rep. I'm not doing this because I need to be right. I'm doing it because that's where our count is. Right. And I mean, okay, mm-hmm. so the people who want to work the hardest, that's what I like. People, how, do you, how do you choose who comes into your gym? Hey, it's not that I choose. I try to let bring them in, see how it feels. Maybe I'm not the right guy for you. Maybe you're not the right person for me. And if you're pushing and working and and putting into this what i feel i'm putting into this it's a terrific match the p and, and the other side of that is the people who are not there for that that's just not those are the worst slow so, you down yeah you're there for the wrong reasons then that's just not going to work was there anybody in particular where you really learned something from that their mindset was just so positive and and uh they were you know just working their ass off so much that you learned something from I think I learned from all of them, not to take the PC exit right. on yeah. that, but I think I learned something from all of them. Sometimes it's what to do, how you want to be, and sometimes it's, oh, my God, I hope I never come across like that. Right, right. But I get, I mean, I'm lucky to have a lot of great people, and I'm around people who are highly achieved, highly motivated, um, not like aggro courting success, but they're right. working. They're, they're climbing the ladder in their field, even when they're at the top of the ladder. You go, how is this guy still doing this how is this woman still pushing these boundaries and, and i find that motivating i find that inspirational aspirational so has there been like things that you've learned that way just by kind of seeing them work and just knowing what they do or have these are really fucking powerful people have you learned a lot about like business through them yeah uh you know learned a lot about business directly kind of through them having coffee afterwards or that kind of thing no not having coffee afterwards but i actually had a lady today she said some story came up about someone else and she said and the point of that is never take your foot off the pedal he never gave in he never compromised he never settled right and he got what he deserved and he got what he wanted and he and she goes that's the lesson and i thought that's the lesson right right 
So it's almost more general. It's not like you sat down and talked about like numbers or anything like yeah, that yeah, with yeah. some of the powerful people that you guys have trained. For me, it's sort of both. Like, you know, we're again, we're in a different spot. I, I've I've had my own training business for like three years and I'm, I sort of fly by the seat of my pants and in, 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 right. well, in a lot of respects. And, um, I've probably learned a lot more about business from my clients than any like trainers. I haven't gotten any formal like business coaching or things like that. But I think I, if you look at people outside of your field that are successful, there's a lot of common denominators, mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. in what they say, but also just how they act and how the way care, they go about they their lives, yeah. how they carry themselves. Yeah. And all that type of stuff. And, um, I'm pretty lucky to train people that are very successful and you look at that and you see that and you kind of like monkey see monkey do, um, right. and apply that to, to training and, you know, in, in business also, you know, um, dealing with people, uh, and then, yes, I, I'm lucky in that some of my clients will, like, give me advice on how to do things or go, you know, yeah, maybe do that. Like, in, and they know I've been doing it for three years. So they'll go, hey, have you ever thought about doing X or try Y? And I'm like, X or like ecstasy? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you ever try that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thought, and yeah. that will make the hour go yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, they but, might have something else in mind, but I have gotten, uh, <laughs> advice both just from watching them and from them actually giving me advice. What do you think of this advice? Build the chest, fuck the rest. <laughs> oh, that's why they invented pants. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I'd like to take a minute yeah. on that. Ben. I just said that's what, yeah, <laughs> why, yeah why, that's why they invented pants. <laughs> Is that another one of yours? Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't see in the mirror. What's the what point? What about uh, L.A. face with an Oakland booty? I'm all about that. <laughs> ben? Mm, I don't know. You better not, say the right ass, thing because the people from Oakland yeah. will whoop your ass. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. Ass so fat, let's make a baby. Down with that. <laughs> no, I mean, most deaf had a better line. <laughs> ass so fat, you can see it from the front. That's the, that's <laughs> that's the most deaf good. line. That's pretty good. That's uh, Miss Fat Booty. You guys have anything wild, crazy, or otherwise that has happened, you know, during a training session when you're working with somebody, you've been doing it for so long. Is there uh, something that stands out in your mind? You know, somebody just got wild and did something crazy, any sort of poop story, <laughs> anything like that going on? Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> well, poop that stories are part of the podcast. That but. took a turn. <laughs> Yeah, I've had a. That was great. When the guy came to test one of my athletes, yeah. and he, yeah, I had um, <laughs> that is actually two times and same tester. I had a guy came in and he said, "I have to do my drug test." And I said, "Okay, is that like before the workout?" He goes, "No, the guy's gonna be here." And I go, "What?" And he said, "The guy's gonna be here. I wanted to do it here." And you thought they were testing you, obviously. Yeah. I'm so jacked. All natty, yeah. bro. That's right. And uh. And so the guy came in, and that's not a, a to me, that's not an enviable job. You're right. And he went in and followed my guy into the bathroom. And I didn't know this. He can't stand behind him. So he has they to gotta stand be right there. like this and see what you <laughs> saw in the mirror from the side. The pecker checker, yeah. just like your mirror. Maybe that's why yeah. your mirror is set up that way. Yeah, that's why. That's exactly <laughs> that. And that's when I redid the bathrooms. And he has to stand there and watch that. And I just thought, why am I in here seeing him see that? And it was one of those things where I just thought, wow, pro sports is not what people think. It yeah. Is. You know, it was. Yeah, you're and, almost and like, how did I get myself guy, into this mess? But didn't you harass the guy? A little Hur yeah. You gave well, a little bit of shit, right? I gave it because I said to him, I said, hey, big guy. Stop whining, Ben. <laughs> uh, I said, I said, I go, I'm getting hungry. Dude, seriously, why are you back up a little? Give him some space. And my guy said, No, he has to see it. I go, What? I go, Come on, dude. I go, Get some dignity. You're standing around just watching dicks all day. And, <laughs> and I was harassing him. And it's not fair. I mean, that is the guy's job. But from where? Ben, that's enough. <laughs> oh. Bye. Good night, Zane. That's his name, right? Did I get it right? Yeah. Okay. Good night. <laughs> Bring him in. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Come oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here. Walk it in. Before I did that. You did? Yeah. He sat on my lap. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is he coming over? Oh. Coming over? Oh. Want to sit with Daddy? Get the microphone. 
He's a big boy. Oh my god, large and in short. <laughs> yeah, you good? No, no. He lo he loves grabbing your face. Anyway, you know, Anyway, this is going to last for about that long. Right. Anyway, so I thought that was a, I thought that was a strange moment in personal training, probably not experienced by everyone, <laughs> not needed by everyone, but it was an interesting moment. Listen, you guys know where to find out these guys. If you don't, just go ahead and Google it. You have anything you want to plug before we drop off Ben or? I don't sell anything. No. There you go. No. <laughs> I want to plug Ben Bruno's training. Yeah. Bruno's strong. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle. May all your shits be tapered. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram and Twitter. Later. We're going to thank our thank sponsors you. right here. Okay. Shout out to our sponsors, Ape Man Strong Apparel at apemanstrong.com, bodybuilding.com for all your supplement needs, Compex USA for cutting edge muscle stim machines. Get 28 additional percent off with the code PowerCast. Increase your bench at howmuchyourbench.net and use the code PowerCast. PowerCast. Get 15% off slingshots. And Power, the only strength magazine available in both digital and print at thepowermagazine.com. I'm D Jim McD on all the social medias. Follow the show on Instagram. We are at Mark Bell's Powercast, and we are out of here. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah.